Australia in a <laughs> tiny town because it's all online. That's fine. All right, kia ora koutou katoa and thank you for joining us today. Yesterday afternoon, Cabinet met to discuss the current status of the Trans-Tasman travel arrangements. As you'll be aware, the government has been keeping a close eye on the situation across the Tasman. This watching brief means public health officials have been providing constant advice, including the measures taken by currently unaffected states in order to contain the spread of the current outbreaks. Yesterday was another record day for cases in New South Wales. And before our minds turn to the impact that has on travel, we want to acknowledge the impact it is having very directly on people's lives. COVID-19 is devastating. And so to the people of Australia, to the state premiers and to the government, you have in us a friend who is willing a speedy recovery for your people, communities and the whole country. But there is no doubt that the movement of people can complicate recovery. Of the 136 new cases today in New South Wales, 53 were symptomatic in the community. Not all of them are linked to known cases. Cases have already cropped up linked to New South Wales in other Australian states. Quarantine free travel from New South Wales, as you know, is paused. And New Zealand currently also has a pause in place with Victoria and South Australia, which means pauses now cover approximately half of Australia's entire population. We've acted with an abundance of caution at every turn, and we will continue to do so. Right now, we're deploying staff from Immigration New Zealand to Australian ports to check that all travellers to New Zealand have proof of a negative pre-departure test. This means every traveller will be stopped and checked before they can fly. This further step will provide an extra measure of confidence for New Zealanders and has been part of our approach to change and adapt to the ever-changing nature of COVID. And there is no doubt it has changed in recent months. Since we set up Quarantine Free Travel with Australia some months ago, more than 200,000 people have flown between our two countries. When we set up the traffic light system for COVID-19, it was based on what we knew at that time about variants that were present and how it was moving through countries and communities. But the Delta variant has materially changed the risk profile. We've seen that contact tracing alone is unable to get ahead of this variant and that restrictions are absolutely necessary to stamp it out. In the UK, the seven day rolling average of daily cases to last weekend was more than 42,000. In the last 30 days, 99% of cases have been Delta. In Indonesia, the seven day rolling average of new cases to last weekend was more than 48,000. Capacity for whole genome sequencing is limited there, but analysis suggests the Delta variant is widespread. Malaysia, South Africa and Fiji are also seeing concerning rates of infection, and Delta continues to be the dominant variant. In the view of our health officials, there is greater risk now from the Delta variant than there was when we opened the quarantine free travel arrangement with Australia. It is the government's duty to keep New Zealanders safe from COVID-19, and we continue to believe that the strongest health response is also the strongest economic response. This approach has served us well to date. So too is our willingness to adapt. COVID has changed, and so we must. It's on that basis that the Director-General of Health has recommended and Cabinet has agreed to suspend quarantine free travel with Australia. From 11.59 p.m. tonight, Australians will no longer be able to enter New Zealand quarantine free. This will be in place for at least the next eight weeks. At that point, we will reassess our arrangements. For New Zealanders in Australia, we are absolutely committed to getting you home. For the next seven days, we will have managed return flights for New Zealanders from all states and territories. Only New Zealand citizens and those ordinarily resident in New Zealand will be able to fly home. While we have seen the, set the return period to seven days, if we have not met the demand for Kiwis to return in that time, we will work with the airlines to extend those flights for a few days till we have brought all those who intend to come home. 
There are two states where return will have extra conditions. As you know, anyone who has been in New South Wales in the last 14 days can only return to New Zealand via a flight from Sydney and will still have to go into managed isolation for 14 days. That requirement remains unchanged. Those who have been in Victoria must have proof of a negative pre-departure test and must immediately self-isolate upon return to New Zealand and return a negative day three test before ending their period of isolation. For everyone else, you can fly home provided you have evidence of a negative pre-departure test, which is our existing arrangement. Once we've exhausted the demand for Kiwis to return, then the suspension of travel will be fully implemented. That means all incoming travellers from Australia will need to have a spot in managed isolation. There is considerable pressure on our managed isolation facilities at the moment, and my strong urging to everyone is do not travel to Australia over the next eight weeks. We'll also be updating our official travel advice to reflect this. Before I wrap up, I do want to speak briefly to what we'll be looking for when we come to reassess the suspension in eight weeks' time. Firstly, we do want the bubble to resume. We remain committed to it. And when I spoke to Prime Minister Scott Morrison this morning, I conveyed this view directly, but it must be safe. In the lead up to reviewing the suspension, we'd need to be certain that the outbreak in New South Wales and wider Australia is contained, that any remaining cases are generally linked, that we don't see the large number of cases we're currently seeing in the community. We'd want to ensure that New Zealand's elimination strategy would not be at risk from resuming quarantine free travel. We've always said that our response would evolve as the virus evolved. This is not a decision we have taken lightly, but it is, we believe, the right one. I know this will mean many people will find themselves for a time separated once more from friends and family who live in Australia, and I know this announcement will be a disappointment to them. However, just as we have our alert settings for managing cases in New Zealand, we also have a framework for managing cases in Australia. Now is the time for a suspension to ensure New Zealanders aren't put at undue risk from COVID-19 and to ensure we retain our hard-won gains. Our team of five million has worked hard to put us in a strong position both health-wise and economically, and we will not risk that. I'd like to now hand over to Dr Ashley Bloomfield to explain more of the public health rationale behind this decision and also how we'll look in the next eight weeks to the status of Australia. Dr Bloomfield. Thank you, Prime Minister. Kia ora koutou katoa. So just to 